Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, and I have to tell you, this is this is really a special treat because this week I have, and I've tried to get a bio out of him. He won't give it to me. I have Rick Dawson in full IU gear. We're both Hoosiers, but more than that, I was asking Rick, I'm like, how do you want me to introduce you? He's like, I don't, he's like, I don't know. He's like, I do what you do with, with houses. So he is the house geek, my doppelganger, <laughs> Rick Dawson, living the dream in Munster, Indiana. How about those Hoosiers? How about those Hoosiers? I mean, after that Wisconsin win, just another treat, you know, just a couple of days later. It was just, it was super. It, yeah. I uh, Last year, I changed my son's name from Noah to Victor Oladipo. And I would just be like, Oladipo. Did they let you do that down, uh, down the county? Man, they usually give me, give me a hard time when I try to. No, try but, to change my kids' names. But, no, no, they, they loved is, it. They they, they understood. They, well, they compl- hey, yeah. Arizona is a big basketball state too, isn't it? They're uh, they're out in front this year, right? I'm, yeah, I'm you know what? They they just lost their first game, but they're they're great. They're a powerhouse. Yeah, they're probably gonna be the team to beat so, this year. But Yogi Ferrell. Yeah, he's just a one man wrecking crew. I think. Uh, yeah, I think next year is really gonna be special for him. That's gonna be great. And this, hey, there's some time left this year, right? That's right. I mean, they they could make the tournament. They're fourteen and eight right now. Is that right? Um. Hey, I. You know what? I haven't been following them that close after uh, after they lost to Northwestern. I just had to kind of put my tail between my legs for a while and not look at their record anymore. That was what a couple of games ago. But you know, we need a rebuilding year. That's all we need. Right. We'll right. Back. All right. So we can't talk about Indiana basketball the entire time. Let's talk about you. Rick Dawson. I thought you meant you, the audience. Member. No, no, we yeah, can't. We can't talk about them either. because we we don't know what's going on with them. Oh, but okay. I I do know that they want to know one thing: how you became you. So we all want to be living like you, including well, if you including want to be myself. living like me. Then the first thing that you need to do is you need to go buy a one thousand dollar mobile home because then you'll be st- you'll be starting out your real estate career in my footsteps. Is that right? Yes, it's right. We um, we had nothing to work with really, money wise, for uh, for our first year. And uh, you got you guys ought to read, uh, catch up on a book. It's probably out of print now by Lonnie Scruggs. It's called Deals on Wheels. Yeah. And the whole have you heard of that? Of course. He, that's like, okay. the, that's like yeah, well, the, you the have, mobile yeah. home bible. You know, until you reach a certain point of uh, uh, saturation of going to every real estate course uh, that that's out there, like I did, and you probably have. Uh, uh, you know, it's not very well known, but very interesting concepts. You buy these mobile homes, you let people uh, buy them from you. If you do it right, you don't really fix them up or anything. You just sell them on payments. It's almost exactly what you do with land. Real, I mean, in a way, right. it's, it's getting it real cheap when someone, you know, just has to move or something and they're getting out of there and they're basically leaving it behind. You grab it for nothing and uh, you get 500 bucks down and 200 a month. So we did that for about a year and, you know, that was fine, but uh, it, it I really wanted to move up in the big leagues, so went and found the ugliest house I could out there and started swinging the hammer. And a few years later, I was bankrupt, so it was pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> it's really a great start that uh, that I don't recommend to anybody because you know you got so much liability and stuff when you're when you're trying to make it big by rehabbing and being subject to market forces and all that. You right, know, right. so one thing I like about how how you guys started it seems like you just picked the right thing right from the beginning and just ran with it so that's sweet and you're, you're trying to show everybody else how to do it with the listen so i'm trying that's I'm cool trying. you know it but you know i think i got lucky because um you know it like like you said like you took a hammer and you fixed the house like even if i wanted to i couldn't fix a house like like you read these books i just read uh david and goliath by malcolm gladwell <laughs> and he was making the argument like you wouldn't ever want to have uh you know uh dyslexia He's like, but if you did, you'd become, you know, because of these deficits, 
it would help you become more successful because you'd have to, you couldn't read real well, but you didn't know how to listen real well. And like this guy, David Boyd is like the best litigator in the country has dyslexia. So I'm kind of dyslexic with, with tools. Like I can't use one. So I had to actually invest in land. Like it worked for me. Well, yeah, the, I'm glad that, uh, you, you know, you, you took that path for whatever reason. I just, I think I was the same as you, but I just had some idea that I just had to do it. So I, uh, eventually learned, you know, and we, we got crews going for us. So we didn't have to swing the hammer, but you know, a, a lot of people make a lot of money at it, but I guess we just weren't cut out. We, we just didn't do it right. We weren't cut out for it. And, uh, so, you know, I always tell this story on, on webinars. I do. I mean, I, I just noticed I was buying all these houses I was rehabbing from the same guy, the same broker, um, in my town. And, you know, finally I'm like, man, what is it? Like, who's this client here that has all this stuff? Oh, they buy it at tax sales. So, uh, you know, we thought we, it's like a light bulb went off in both of our heads. We're like, let's go. Right. And, uh, you know, we went and, um, you know, as I, as I heard you say on uh, the podcast years I listened to, uh, especially with houses, the, the bidding even for for marginal stuff just gets out of hand sometimes. Oh, yeah, it's crazy. And, and it did. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I, I really just took a look at it. It goes, well, you know, this isn't going to work. I can't compete with these guys with, you know, bringing a billfold of a million dollars to the sale, which they, they literally, literally do. And so, um, actually, what happened next? So, the, the broker I was by now friends with, one of his clients sent him to one of the nice houses that he got at the sale to kick the people out and haul them out. And the guy wanted to borrow my crew. So, I ended up over there during the day at one point just seeing what was going on. You know, I'm seeing them move these people out of the house, and they owned it free and clear, and they lost it for over a few grand, you know. Oh, my God. I was just thinking, God, it was only a few grand. I mean, I got that. I wish I just would have been here like three months ago, and I could have at least given them some money for the house or did something. And I went, well, man, this is cool. I mean, it's coming up next year. Why don't I just get out in front of it? And that's what I did. I, You know, I just I just did sort of a regular house buying campaign, knowing that these people had an absolute deadline. And... um you know, it was just surprisingly easy to to buy from people in tax sale because they're not like the mortgage foreclosure people, right? You right. notice that? I mean, those people are, are a nightmare to deal with. They got uh, 100 people contacting them day in and day out, and they probably got no equity. And I mean, it's just a nightmare to be in that business. I, I really gave it a try one time just to see if there was anything there, and there just wasn't. So these guys own their house free and clear a lot of times, or their land, and uh, they're in a perfect position to salvage something with you at the end so uh it's just really worked out well for me ever since i think i did my first one in oh two or oh three and uh just did my last one a couple months ago so wow it's really uh really been good for me that's amazing that's amazing so you know i think one of your good points about about working land is that um you know, there's no tenants, toilets, and you thought of a few more teas that aren't aren't so common. Kind of termites, termites, trash, trash, right? Right. You know, if you do, I I'd like to, you know, I just like to say that if you do it like I do with houses, there's none of that either. Because if you build in enough cushion, almost anything can happen. You can hire almost anyone to do anything, and you still come out ahead. You know, you don't try to make five thousand dollars on a on a fifty thousand dollar house, you know, in this in this situation, you've got to have so much cushion to deal with, so that you know everything goes wrong, you still walk out of there with a profit. So, like this latest house we did, I didn't. You know, I was in Chicago, and we did it in St. Louis. So, I mean, I can't now, do did much you, from did here. Do you go to St. Louis? Do you do you physically go and check out these houses? Well, not to check it out, but to save it from the tax sale. Oh, okay. So, yeah. I found out about it at four p.m. and. The deadline was 11 a.m. the next day. So I hopped on a plane, which takes 45 minutes to get there, but it takes an hour to get to the airport and back. Right. Um, and I hopped on a plane and I went down there. So uh, it wasn't to look at the house for sure. It was just uh, really the only way to do it. You know, I mean, how else are you going to have certified funds um, at a, at a, a county? By right. the next so was, was this St. Louis County? I'm from St. Louis. It was. It was in uh, – and it was in a really nice part too. It was in um, – it was near Clayton University sure. Park. Oh, yeah, I know Clayton really well. It was a big uh, 3,500 square foot house that the guy had gutted and uh, probably spent way more than it was worth, but it was still all taken apart. And uh, 
I guess he finally just realized, wow, it's like tomorrow. I better better do something with this. So we gave him some cash and uh, we took care of the taxes and uh, we just put it on the market as it was. You know, it was driving my partners crazy not to like fix it up. I'm like, no, it's not how you do it. You just sell it like this. Oh my God, but I just got the after repair appraisal. It's like 390,000. We got to fix it up. Right. No, we're going to sell it for 125. Wait, That's wait, you just from what, what, what did you have in it? 30. You had 30 in it? Yeah. So wow. the place practically burned down and we made <laughs> money. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, a, it was a fight because, you know, you, you see that maybe that extra 100,000 you could make in there. but And maybe you could, but you'd be spending your life on it for for yeah. six months. You I, know? I, yeah, I, I, did, I did a house slip out here back when things were crazy. I want to say 2006. And I hated it. I hated it. Did you fit? It was a fixer and all that too? Yeah. Yeah. It was, a, it was a, you know, we bought it off the courthouse and we fixed it up. We spent maybe 50 on it. We made a hundred thousand on it. But when I calculated my time in frustration, I broke even. I, yeah, I'm like, I'll sure. never do this again. Every other day I'm driving 45 minutes of this freaking house. Was a lot of that appreciation too? And you, and you didn't really make that much? Or, or was it was the, all speculation. It was just the market. It had nothing to do with me. Okay, so if it was a, if the prices weren't going up, you would have made quite a bit less on it. Then much too, right? less. It was, so, it was well, yeah. I mean, we bought it at the right time in that market when things were crazy. So I'm guessing if you just bought it and boarded it up and unboarded it up six months later, you probably would have made the same amount or very close to it. You think so? Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't. I don't. Price, maybe. Maybe they're going up. They're going up. Yeah, you, you know what? You're probably right. I didn't even By think then, about uh, it like that. Uh, House Flippers was probably on TV, and there was uh, 20 people wanting to get that place by then. So I don't know. Um, I've just always believed in, ever since my uh, my, my rehabbing days, that uh, if you don't buy it with you know enough to make some money when you pass on to the next guy, you're not getting a deal, right? I right. mean, if you're not able to sell it without doing anything, then you didn't get a good deal. You're just getting what everyone else is willing to pay for it. Right? Yeah, yeah, you're 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 exact. You're my doppelganger for houses. It's the exact same thing I do with land. Exactly. So you know, I'm I am very uh, the one problem I always had with land, and it was just because I didn't know, was I never really had a good way to tell uh, what I could really expect to get out of it. Do you can you run that th- through that with me for just a second? I, I heard you say there's some some sites you go to and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, Let, yeah. You know, let's just take the most, like the lowest common denominator. Like the easiest site is eBay, right? Mm-hmm. So there's land on eBay. Okay. So, you know, let's say we're looking at five acres in, you know, a county in, in California, right? And then we, yeah. see, we see, you know, the comparable sales on eBay. We see like this property for five acres has been selling for $10,000. And that couldn't just be the sucker that bought the five acres from somebody out there. I mean, I'm being dead serious. You'll it, see it, a few sales usually. And then, yeah, yeah. I mean, it'll be a few sales, you know, we'll, and we'll, we'll look at it. We'll look at a few sites, but eBay is always the lowest. So oh, okay. there's, yeah, it's always the lowest. Like that's, huh. the, that's the flea market, right? <laughs> so, you know, if you go to the realtors and the unmarketable title, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. so then we'll say, okay, $10,000, that's the absolute lowest. And um, like, okay, we need to make 300% margins. So the lowest we can offer on that is typically what? About a little more than three grand, right? Yeah. Okay. So then we'll double check our number numbers and we'll say, okay, we'll call the county assessor and be like, okay, what are some comps on this? And if 10 really is the lowest, then, oh, we're on to something here. We'll send out so, our offers. So the bottom line is you can get your hands on that through all the sources that you've kind of amassed over the years or through the county or, or oh something. yeah yeah absolutely yeah there, there's, just, yeah we're not speculating that, yeah so yeah uh listening to your so it was, this is pretty funny you're gonna laugh about this so i'm sure you've been on a webinar or two before and you know if you're polite at the beginning you say now mark i'm gonna go ahead and mute myself here so i can take notes the whole time that you're talking up there i mean <laughs> i'll take a couple notes here and there but i mean you know i'm let's face it i'm not writing a whole notebook with this stuff but during those first podcasts I was listening to yours, I'm like fumbling around the paper, the car for paper. I'm like, wait, oh, I never heard of that one. Writing it down. <clears throat> we both use all this stuff nobody's ever heard of, like in De Niro before. I love that thing. It totally yeah, yeah. Me out, you know, I love that thing. What else? I forget what else you use, but 
I was like, oh my god, I'm the only one that uses that too. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's so yeah. So I love your tool time or tool tip or whatever you had there for a while. Those, yeah, those yeah. You know, you know when to put you on the spot. By the way, you're gonna have to give us the tip of the week. I will at, at the end. I absolutely will in good time. All right, great. So okay, so tell me about overages. Okay, so overages was the next big leap. Uh, you know. You still get your hands a little dirty even when you do houses my way, you know. I mean, right. you still got a, you know, you'll still get the building department calling you say, when are you going to get this thing sold? When are you get, you know, but it's still, it's still all right. But I mean, you're going to get a little bit of that. But why not just go for the cash, right? What that's what you want to like. At the end of the day, that's why you do all this stuff, right? So there's cash at the end. You can take a big shortcut. So back to my story about bidding again, you know. Same kind of thing. We went, you know, these guys are bidding so high on this stuff, we can't buy it. So that's – for every yin, yin, there's a yang. There must be somebody that can win from that. It wasn't the county. Um, and we. it turned out uh, somebody in the county office told a, a buddy of mine, oh, you know, it's going to be two more weeks and we're sending all this money to the county general fund. They had – all this money that had been overpaid for the properties because they start out at what five ten grand, they go up to a hundred, five hundred sometimes. Right. That's yeah. So, that's excess proceeds, right? That's right. Okay. So not all states do it like that. Mine does. Um, let's see. Yours doesn't. You're in right. Arizona, right? Right. Um, but you know, probably half the states have a system like that. And right. just to make a long story short, generally anything they end up with in their hand that is above what they're owed. They got to give back to the owner uh, right. if that property's lost, and it's only fair. Why should they get a windfall of cash when they got fully paid? So, long story short, we discovered that you know we could hunt these people down and negotiate a finder fee for for those funds. And so, you know, we've been doing that ever since. It was really fun. I mean, we go down to the county back then. There wasn't such good stuff online for finding people, but you you'd go through the county records and you'd find you know who knows what. Maybe they had a speeding ticket you find that in like you know in a in a case and you find right. out where they lived or one time we found out a power of attorney for a guy that we couldn't find anywhere and we got a certified copy of it took it to his ex-wife who, <laughs> who was allowed to be his power of attorney and she said i'll sign that over for you she signed it over for us it's great that's great that was one of our best ones so um so you now you were doing this before like there's spokio and binverified.com and all that yeah stuff. absolutely um you're like, it, you're like a PI. Yeah, we were doing the best we could with what we had. I mean, there was like stoneagewhitepages.com. But I mean, if you hadn't lived there for five years and been in the in the phone book, you probably weren't on there. Um, so it really started getting exciting probably, I don't know, maybe, maybe 2007 or 8. Because then stuff started coming on the internet that you could really use to find people. And we discovered um, Accurant, which is like a... It's, at the time, we barely got access to it. It was only because my wife was a real estate broker and she concocted some reason to need it. Now you can't get it uh, usually at all unless you're a lawyer or something or a, a PI or something. This thing really has an amazing amount of um, data and it's all intertwined together. So if you can pick up on a guy's sister somewhere, then you can click and see who she's lived with before and then who they've lived with. And then, you know, right. Right. Kind of paint the whole web of whoever you're looking for usually. And yeah, but can, couldn't I just go on Facebook today and be like, Oh look, she likes cats. Absolutely. That's really one of the best things you can do now is find people through social media or, uh, you know, if you find, you know, it's amazing. If you just spend a little time, you'll realize who their friends are, even if you can't get straight to them and you'll, You'll know the guy grew up on, on Maple Avenue. So you'll say to the guy, hey, it's Rick from the Maple Avenue neighborhood. Just wondering how, uh, how old Bob's doing. Have him give me a, an email, would you? Oh, God, I'll give you an email about half the time. So <clears throat> um, a lot of fun. That's how we find him now. Spokio is really fun. I was on something today. Um, I was clearing out old bad emails from my email list today, and I, was, I think I went to search one. And the guy's picture popped up, and I'm like, oh, my God, they've really got this email searching down now. I typed myself in. Right. There was a picture of my daughter when she was four when we were on a cruise. That showed up on my thing, and that was the only picture. Oh, my God. Well, how in the hell did they do that? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, that's, you know, it that's wasn't spooky. anything sick or anything. It was just like, whoa, we're, I, I like hadn't seen that picture myself in like six years. You know, no, our, our whole lives are being indexed. 
Between Google and Facebook, our whole lives are being indexed. Yeah. Mainly, mainly Google, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, I look, I love all the free stuff Google gives me. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to make that exchange. Give me, <laughs> yeah, give yeah. me unlimited, you know, email. Give me I free calling. Much. Take my life here. Yeah. Yeah. Everything you used to pay for is slowly getting uh, turned much better and free. So it's great. I, I can't argue with that. So yeah, that's really what we did, and we just decided um, in about 2008. Uh, I just got interested in this whole uh, this whole teaching and internet thing, and started going that route. And you, you, and you uh, let me yeah. get rid of this here. That was from you, by the way. Somehow, I don't know how that happened. That's cool. Uh, anyway, um, yeah. So I met up with. Actually, I got to work with the guy that really taught me everything I knew about. Uh, about buying houses and doing not really doing overages, but doing tax sale houses. A guy named Joe Kaiser. And oh uh, yeah, yeah, we ended I know up Joe doing Kaiser. This course together. It was like sort of like a it was really a neat thing to like you know follow a guy and learn everything from, him and then get to be his partner for a few years. So we did that course together and just been uh, wreaking havoc all over the country with all these uh, students for unleashing on these counties. They're running out of uh, out of all their money that they're used to stealing from everybody. So. Unbelievable. So, been fun, and we're we're getting uh, we're getting that back out again, and people are already collecting checks that have uh, gotten involved in the last few weeks. So that's another thing about that business, so great, it's so fast, you know. I it's mean, fast. you can really get the cat. You just skip everything, right? You, know? you skip the buying, you skip the working on it, you skip the selling. You just just get the cash. It's great. I love it. I love it. So all right, so that's that's hooked on overages. If you wanted to learn more about it, you just go to what hookedonoverages.com? dot com. Yeah, if you go there and uh, there should be a, a a little sign up form, you can probably come to our next webinar. Uh, okay. Or uh, yeah, I think that's the best place. Just stick your email in there if you wanna if you wanna check out our next webinar. All right, cool. Okay, so now tell me about diamonds in the rough. How is that different than overages? Well, diamonds in the rough is interesting too because as you know, all sorts of property goes to tax sales, and when you think of all, all right. sorts of property, you think. Yeah, houses go. I've seen an apartment building go. I've seen, seen some. You know, I've seen like a Seven Eleven go. I've seen that. Right. Well, other really weird stuff goes to tax sales, like cell towers, like billboards, <laughs> like right. half houses, <clears throat> not whole houses, half three quarters houses. And no one and, wants that stuff. Well, they don't know. If they knew what they were doing, they would. Okay. Um, you know these. The first two items I mentioned, like billboards, cell towers, uh, those things pay huge amounts of rent to the owner of the land, right. and it's the uh, it's the other party that does all the advertising, the getting the customers, the fixing the sign, the building. The you just own that little piece of land right there, and uh, a, a guy I know around here gets twelve thousand dollars a year from a quarter acre piece of land that has a cell tower on it, and I just don't think those are going anywhere anytime soon. They they're no. They fight you to the to the death if you try to put up a new one. So if there's oh, yeah. one there now, it's staying there, and it's it's not going to get any cheaper to negotiate the leases on those things because someone else is more than happy to uh, take it too. So that's really the ultimate cash flow investment, don't you think? <clears throat> you buy something that you literally just get the checks. I mean, you, you yeah, don't that that is the thing. that is the ultimate. And you know, it's funny because I I uh, I have like this passive income blueprint, right? And I'm always talking about what's the perfect business, you know, no inventory, a one-time sale, recurring revenue. This is even better. There's no sale. You just get the yeah, asset. No and get, sale, yeah, and, and get you're dealing check. with like a A1 credit of Verizon or AT and T, right? They're not gonna, they're not gonna lose their job and not, and not right. be able to pay you either, right? I mean, they're gonna, they're gonna pay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you're, yeah, this this is absolutely like this is creative real estate to like the nth degree. Genius. Yeah, and, you got to keep going forward, man. You know, I, know. I, I learned a lot from you guys, though. I really, I really liked a lot of the stuff you're doing. It's, it's really super. Um, so what I think could help everybody that's, um, you know, that's, that's following your system or, or just buying at the tax sale themselves is, you know, that in order to find these things for diamonds in the rough, we had to develop this viewer, which you probably saw a little bit. When we oh yeah, it looked great. Kind of, I loved it. Is it is it taxparcelviewer.com? TaxPropertyViewer.com. Tax property. I'm gonna write this down. TaxPropertyViewer.com. And if you know, if you were diligent and you got to Mark's podcast right when it comes out, which is right now, it's set on free right now, so you can just 
put your email in and go crazy. Wait, yeah. no, this this thing doesn't come out until uh, Thursday. Oh man. Well, I hope it's still free then. No, I'll <laughs> I'll I'll make sure it's free until Friday. So if I, so, your dutiful fans can can go check it out. But honestly, Rick, this is uh, awesome. Wow. It's not like really anything you've seen before because, uh, well, you saw it, but. The, the great thing about it, it lets you it lets you get rid of all the junk that you don't want. You know, you, you have some kind of buying criteria in mind when you go to the tax sale. Right. Uh, you can get rid of all the houses right off the bat without – just pick I only want the land. You can do the price range. You can do um, all sorts of different things like that. And then you only end up with a small number left. And then the cool part is they just come on your, your computer screen as fast as you can click the next button. It's like sitting there typing it in the GPS and, and messing around. It comes up that fast. So – can, really I get, can I get title info on this? I'm sorry? Can I get title? Would I know if there's a lien? I bet you could. I don't have that. You can get all sorts of data layers with this thing. And if I, if I learn that that's something people want, I could probably add that. I mean, you can actually get a layer that shows the crime. Like if it's dark red, it's a bad crime area. If it Fades to orange, it's not so bad. If it's yellow, it's, I mean, you can put any kind of layer on top of this map, like a see-through layer uh, that you want. So right now we just have the parcel lines on there. And, you know, that's really helpful. I bet when you're buying land, sometimes it's not entirely clear where it starts and where it ends. Yeah. Right? I mean, this isn't as good as a survey, but it's, it's a heck of a lot better than guessing. Yeah, I'll tell you what, let, let the buyer do the survey. You know, yeah. You know what? I, if I'm buying a pennies on the dollar... I'll, I'll do this, make my maps with my screenshots. I'll get the boundaries close enough, right? Yeah. This is a great marketing tool. So now when you say lists uploaded now, is that, is that the back tax list? Well, no. We take the list of just the tax sale. Yeah, I guess the back tax list, the, the tax sale that's coming up. It runs off the parcel numbers. It doesn't – you know, there's some other things out there you can I've seen where it'll show pictures, but it only shows it if you type an address in. Right. It's very imprecise. If anybody's familiar with tax sales, you'll know that um, you know there can be two lots for one has a house, one doesn't, and they're both 1500 Elm Street in the in the newspaper. So right. you don't really know what you're getting that way. This goes off the parcel number. It shows you. It highlights the the actual parcel that's at you know at hand, and you can see all the other ones around it. So what if you don't want to buy a house that has three burned out houses in the block next to it or something? You, know, you save all that time going out there. You know, I assume most people go look at all this stuff and make a whole day out of it before the sale. This this really gets you down to like maybe, I, I don't know, a very small number that you're really likely to to want to bid on. I and love this. For land, it's really great too. This is great. This is great. Yeah. I think you're, I, do, I don't think you'll ever uh, do your auction bidding quite the same again. Wow. I just, I just signed up for it. Oh, good. Okay. So, but then what? Like, do I just pay for lists? Like, kind of like uh, taxalist.com? See, that's the tricky sales? part about it when it starts free is that you don't know what's going to happen after <laughs> it's locked down, man. I just have to, I have to see what kind of addiction level I can get from people before I do that. Um, probably what we're going to do, we're, we're just going to sell it by the list. And it's going to be a little more than the list you pay for, uh, the, the spreadsheets you pay for. It's not going to be a ton more. And then if anybody's really a major buyer out there, they can buy a whole state or they could even buy the, the whole country. And okay. um, uh, it, we have about 2,000 counties of coverage. Certainly, there's about 3,300. Most of the ones that we don't have, the 1,300, they're like in, you know, uh, South Dakota and stuff. I mean, they're, they're, they're not really anything anyone looks at. Anything major we have. Um, yeah, so we're just going to see how it goes. We're going to be getting some marketing out to some of the tax sale buyers that have bought in the past and uh, I sure appreciate any word you get out, but it's going to make wow. uh, Excel buying a lot easier. This is phenomenal. I'll tell you what, my, my investors toolkit students need this. Can I, you know what? This is going to be, I'm skipping you by the way. So we're at the, we're at the point of the, of the, of the podcast where we give our tip of the week. I'm taking tax property viewer.com. Is that okay, Rick? Or do you do you want to? Wow, that was pretty smooth. I did not see that one. Do you do you mind? I had that all like set for myself. I could just relax, but you jumped and got it. This is fantastic. This is so good. (laughs) This is really good. I just signed up. It looks great. And you know what's so funny is I saw it like the 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 level of the detail with the pictures, um, because we were at the uh, the tax and investing event together. 
It, it looks, it's really good looking. Like, I don't know how you developed it. Are you it's like a software genius or? I just think think of the ideas and then I can, I can usually find the the geniuses to, to put it together. And, you know, and all, like we were saying about Google, all of these high resolution images are all thanks to them. They're, and Bing, I mean, they provide all that stuff. Some of the pictures, when you get them, it's, you just, they're as good as any picture you've ever seen before. And you're just sitting right at your desk at home and looking at this beautiful piece of land that you're about to buy for, for a few hundred bucks and uh, resell for God knows what. So, wow. you know, and, and you know, it, the cool thing is it helps you see things about it that might be bad or good too, right? I mean, right. So, some can be tree lined in the street, and then you see they're they're all, you know, deforested. <laughs> 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 once you get back a little better, right? You know, who knows what? So, I was looking at some stuff in Indiana where once you got off the road, I mean, it was so darn hilly and and um, mountainous almost. You know, like by IU, there's like these huge granite like yeah things that come out of the ground down there and i mean it's beautiful but i don't think you could like be on your own land anywhere if you bought that so yeah exactly it's it's just good to be able to see stuff like that and uh, it really saves you a lot of mistakes and once in a while it helps you find something that you normally would have passed by right you'd normally you'd be looking at this list and you go well that doesn't look too good i mean things only selling for 200 bucks there must you know it must be junk you go, oh, hold on, I'll just push, I'll just push this button a hundred times, and I'll watch them flash before me. And then you see something really cool in there that, uh, for some reason, or another just kind of slipped under the radar and doesn't look like the, the kind of properties you normally buy. So I love it. I love I think it. Think you have a good time with that. Uh, Going to be doing some Arizona this year. Absolutely. So I gotta, I gotta hurry up and get some of those uploaded for you then. Yeah. Well, I can, I can see. Like, okay, list uploaded now. Arizona's up. Texas is up. Florida's up. My favorite states are up. California, Nevada. Well, you're gonna if you click inside that state, the only problem is you're gonna see there's like one loaded in. So I'm gonna have to do uh, that. Oh yeah, Coconino. One, but Coconino's good. Well, so you got that now, and um, uh, I've got a couple sitting right here. I can I'll pop in there for you. So if you come back tonight, they'll be there. Okay. I'll get cool. you Maricopa. Uh, how do you how do you pronounce? Boy, is Mar- yeah, Maricopa yeah. is competitive. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. That's Some of those outliers are a little better, huh? Yeah, but I'll tell you what. If I can find a cell phone tire, tower, I. I that no one else wants. I'd buy that in a heartbeat. Buy it. Absolutely. Wow. Make sure it doesn't have an easement on it. There's your there's your um there's your due diligence tip of the week for cell towers and billboards. Some some sneaky people realized a few years ago that once you own one, you can give yourself an easement on it and then let it go to taxes and you easements are not wiped out at tax sales. It's a nationwide common law or or the common law rule that, uh, I, you know, I'm, right. I'm speaking a little over my head here, but I mean, I've looked into it. It is not wiped up at tax sale. So the easement, so, the easement's recorded at the recorder's office. You just call the recorder, right? Okay. So I'm about to easement my house off, and then I'm not going to pay taxes on it anymore. So I'll let you know. How that <laughs> That's great. That's great. All right. So, Rick Dawson, what is your tip of the week besides the easement tip, which is a great tip? I, you could even do that. But do you, do you have a site besides mine, which is yours? Well, let's see. You know, there's another very good site for looking at properties that not too many people have seen. Um, and it is called Reportal, RE Portal USA. Have you ever seen that? No. that's. Oh, I can't believe you haven't seen that. R-E Portal. R-E-P-O-R-T-A-L-L USA. Dot com? Yeah. I'm checking it out. Huh. GIS real estate mapping and property record search. Very yeah. cool. Now, that it's kind of lame because you got to type in the par- the property numbers in it, but it really covers almost everything. If you need to see something real quick, um, one at a time, I can't believe you never found that. You, um, it covers a lot of counties. It's hard to get uh, parcel lines for. Um, you can you can type in the parcel number imperfectly, and it'll kind of fix it for you and show it to you. It's really a super site, and it used to be free. Now I think you've got to pay forty or fifty bucks a month. But I mean, if you're in the business, it's it's super. Although you won't need it anymore pretty soon once uh, tax property viewers. Yeah, tax, once once I'm on tax property viewers, all the time, this is great. But this is wow! I can't believe I didn't know about this. Oh yeah. See, Very, I've been I've been doing expert GPS. Expert GS, GIS, right? I never. Yeah, yeah. There, it's it's similar, but um, this is awesome. Does it run off parcel numbers? Well, if I have parcel number, 
then it'll it'll give me the uh well you know what no it runs off the legal township range really? section wow. yeah yeah so I'm, I'm trying to remember that site is good for a couple things uh yeah you can search by owner name even stuff like that and pull up the the picture so this is awesome it's a good one and i think right, they have a three dollar trial or something if anyone wants to just check it out okay report they, they report all usa i call it report all but i think it's supposed to be re our report i don't know it's not only is it a dumb name i think they purposely like hide it in google because it took me forever to find it too and i mean it's been around for a while it turns out so it's, it's hard to find it but uh, oh, wow. that one really got us through for for a while finding these billboards and stuff but Boy, did my fingers get tired. I'm telling you, typing those <laughs> numbers in and typing them wrong and, and all that. So we have done away with that for you. This is great. This is great. Well, if you want to learn more about Rick, go to – where do you go? Do you go to rickdawson.com? Go to deepgrabber.com. I, I lost out on rickdawson.com like a long time ago, so some English guy has it. So no okay. no luck there. But deepgrabber.com would be great. If you, want to, uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about getting these properties, uh, houses before the tax sale, um, you can find out a lot more there. I've got articles up there and something you can download and all that good stuff. All right, great. So go to deedgrabber.com. Um, and then if you want to learn more about so is that where, you, where I can learn about hooked on overages and I can learn about diamonds in the rough? Um, we, and, tax, and tax property viewer.com or is that all like in one thing? Or diamonds to, in the rough got a little too hot. We pulled that off the market. So I, oh, I wanted okay. to tell people about what it was. Maybe they can, maybe they, recognize that opportunity when they stumble across it but okay. um we just had uh we just had to close the doors on that thing i mean we were just getting too many people in there so we're we're just cooking along with everybody that's in there now and um so i don't know maybe we'll put out a training course on what to look for when you're when you're buying yourself but if you just use the viewer and you just you you know you're looking you know you're looking for a, a billboard or cell tower and you know that you've got to look for an easement on it that's pretty much the name of the game you can't. You really can't lose because these things sell for three, four hundred bucks, and that's usually about a month of rent. So that's it's got a it's got a good ROI on it. Yeah, I love. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit. You know, ten percent, not bad. Yeah. yeah. All right. So deedgrabber.com. Give Rick some love. Go there and uh, learn more about my doppelganger and fellow Hoosier. Uh, Rick, this is great. If uh, if you want to learn more about me, go to www.thelandgeek.com. Of course, download for free the Passive Income Blueprint. Get the ebook, How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes. And of course, get this always informative and entertaining podcast delivered each week to your inbox. And look, give me some love. You want to buy some wholesale property, go to FrontierPropertiesUSA.com. Uh, Rick, are we good? Anything else? We're good, and I want everyone to know this has been the least entertaining podcast of all so far. You need to start going back and listening to those other ones. They're really super, Mark. I got to tell you. I mean, thank you. This is like a ten thousand dollar coaching program that you can sit there and listen to for free, uh, right <laughs> on right on your podcast. I can't say enough for how great of a job you've done on it. I appreciate well, it. And, and if you agree with Rick, give us some love. Leave us a comment. Go to iTunes. You know, rate us. And, uh, and let us know how we're doing. You know, email me about different topics. And uh, Rick, I'm going to put you on the spot. Are you going to come back and do this again? Was this fun? Sure. Absolutely. I enjoyed and, it. And you promised to wear the IU hat and the IU garb. Yeah, and I may wear the candy stripes this time too. It just depends. And the candy stripes. All right. That's, that's a treat. I'm, I'm, I'm going to hold you to we're it. We're going to have a video podcast next time? All right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'll do our first video podcast. So uh, that's great. So... This is Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with Rick Dawson from DeedGrabber.com. Uh, I want to thank Rick again. So uh, he's he's now going to be referred to as the the House Geek. I'm gonna have to give him a <laughs> I'm gonna have to give him his own geeky avatar like me. Rick, thanks a lot, and uh, let's do this again. Anytime, anytime, Mark. Thanks a lot. All right, I'll talk to you. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.